Right, hello and welcome to the Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, and Pipeliners CRM. And today I am joined by Don Shapiro. How are you doing, Don? I'm doing great. And where are you today, Don? I'm in uh, Indio, California, City of Festivals, Coachella Music Festival just ended just three miles from my house. So. Oh, excellent. So can you sit out on the, on the deck and listen? Uh, yeah, at, at nighttime. It, it does travel. <laughs> it does travel, especially about midnight. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> just when you want it. Perfect. Um, I'm here in San Diego. I'm a little bit further away from, from you, so I don't hear the music. Uh, so Don Don is known as the eyes uh, eyes of the customer because of his uncanny ability to understand how customers think. Uh, your discoveries on how customers figure out what they value, how they use value to decide um, what they buy, what shapes how customers view the competitive field. So you've been helping businesses in over 34 industries and you've 30, 30 years of research into customer value, helping train sales team to boost sales by over 20 percent. And now you're writing a book called Stealth Value. Uh-huh. So. What is, what is stealth value? Should I? I mean, I feel like I should have worn, uh, you know, dark glasses and maybe a, a, dis, a disguise for this interview. So tell me about stealth. Stealth yeah, value. I, I love the word stealth because you know, like we hear it from the military or the mm-hmm. action movies or whatever. It's really about something that's hidden, that's deeper down inside the customer. What I learned traveling with hundreds of salespeople, interviewing them. You know, I've I've been all over on this. Mm-hmm. Is simply that. If you have a salesperson, we're talking about trained, experienced salespeople, they go out there and they uncover all the needs, all the pain points, all the issues, all the goals, the aspirations, the situation, quantified it, customers acknowledged it. They've done all the right things, just like we get out of consultative selling or anything else. Sure. And um, they do that. And then um, what happens is there's still something there. And so even your top producers still lose sales because there's more going on deeper down. And so is, is part of it that uh, if you go through a discovery process and you think you have reached the point of where you've, you've uncovered some of the needs or whatever, that people kind of stop when they should go deeper. So is that done because salespeople get anxious and think, okay, I've, I've gotten, I've uncovered some needs. So now I grab onto that rather than take it uh, further. And in my mind, like risk on doing all the good work that I've just done. That may be a part of it. I would say for the medium level to lower yeah. level sales performer, they need more training, more experience. Obviously, maybe they went through a consultative selling program, rain insight or challenger or customer centric and are some of the others, but they're not well trained enough. But my focus has been, okay, let's see what the best salespeople are doing and if they could do better. They're uncovering all the needs based upon everything they've been taught, okay? So you have all these needs, you have all these issues. The issue isn't that they think there's enough, although that does happen, that assumption, oh my God, Mm -hmm. it happens all the time. You think you've got enough, you think, oh my God, they're they're gonna buy, they're gonna buy, they're gonna (laughs) buy. But even if you hear a lot of needs, a lot of issues, what we're not doing is realizing there's more going on down there and it's a bigger thing. Can I give you kind of a a hypothetical? Absolutely. Okay. Okay. So imagine, and this is not an imaginary, I'm just going to, I'm going to mask what it really is. You've got a salesperson, then the top 20% of producers, they've been through the top sales training program. They've been doing it for 20 years. They've got it all down. They know how to do all the things right. Two customers, same industry. They uncover the same needs, same issues, same challenges. They get the customer to acknowledge the pain points, the quantification of the pain points. It's all really the same, right? Mm -hmm. One customer buys, one doesn't. Why? Okay. It's not the salesperson. It's not the training. It's not the experience. It's not the knowledge. All of that is there because they're they're a top producer. Mm -hmm. So what's missing? And what happens is there's something more going on deeper down inside that customer. And this is the, the real reason that the whole thing about how they figure out value. And we have misdefined what value is from the very beginning. Yeah. And, and I, I, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because we hear that word value bandied about constantly. And, oh my. and the mantra, <laughs> the mantra, don't sell on price, sell on value. But, but, 
but value to me has become a very nebulous term because it exactly. Means, so when you talk about value, what do you mean? Well, it, it is a nebulous term because you go back 30 years ago, Mac Hannon and others who were writing about it at first said, well, value is the comparison between your price and what you offer. Mm -hmm. Oh, and you got to go and sell better value and more value. And everybody says, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, let's move on. Let's get into consultative selling. Let's get into lead generation. Oh, move, 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 move. <laughs> what, 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 what about value? So I stayed back here in this little cubby hole secretly just continuing to – because I just I'm, – I'm like a five-year-old. Why, 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 why? Okay. <laughs> so value, if you think about it, we, we know the term valuation. Mm -hmm. I value something. We value something. You put a value on something. Okay, you want to sell your home. Somebody comes in and says, this is the value based upon an analysis. Mm -hmm. Valuation, right? So what really happens is, separately from the needs, the wants, the issues, and the pain points, and all the discussions, the customer is assigning a value to everything. Right. They assign a value to need one, two, three, four, and five. They assign a value to you. They assign a value to your company. They assign a value to all your competitors. All of these values that they're assigning, and that assignment is a calculation. It's it's a formula. It's a complex formula going on inside the brain. So you can't come in and say we've got a better value or we got a great value. Mm. Okay, what you have to do is understand how did that customer figure out the value? Right. Okay. Here is the pivotal point. This is this is the big issue. So supposing I uncover some needs and oh oh my God they could save. 18%, they could increase sales by 7%, mm -hmm. they could do this, they could do that, right? And you say, oh my God, this is these are great needs, this is it, I can make the sale, let's go for it. The problem is, you don't know as a salesperson, because you're not thinking about it, how important or unimportant is this offer, is what you're offering to the other things that the customer has to deal with that have nothing to do directly with your offer, but they really do, because mm -hmm. it's their job, it's their business. What are the priorities going on here? And so, let, let me give you, if you know the Likert scales, like when we take a survey, scale, rate it from one sure. to 10, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Everybody's done that. You've done it. I've done it. We've done it a million times. When we are selecting those numbers, we are assigning a value. Yep. 4.5, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. It's a 10. Okay. It's an 11 on a 10, right? Okay. That's a, that's a value. So the customer is saying, yeah, I've got this problem. I got this frustration. Yeah, I could improve things. But on a level of importance compared to everything I'm doing, this yeah. is a 4.5. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, if it's a 4.5, yeah, the needs are there, but I'm not going to spend money on this. Yeah. It's not important enough. It's not that I don't want to, but I've got these other things that I'm getting super pressure from the CEO. I'd better do this. I, I can't do this right now. Yeah. So I think I think that's a great point because I think sometimes we fall into the trap of thinking that just because you and I engage in a conversation and I'm trying to sell you something and maybe you've expressed an interest that you have this may be five percent of what's going on in your job, but for me it's a hundred percent, right? <laughs> and therefore I think that you should be just as engaged in this process as I am, not realizing, as you said, that there yeah, you may you may love it and want it, but there may be ten other things that are way more of a priority and that and I'm wondering why I'm not getting anywhere. Exactly. It's that we are so focused on the sale. Even if we're doing everything right, we really aren't looking at the total world, this complete world of the customer and all the things affecting them. Now, I'm not just in sales or involved in the sales world. I'm a strategic management consultant, like a mini version of McKinsey. OK, right. so I am seeing all kinds of things going on. So I'm sitting with a salesperson for an hour and a half watching them talk with this customer. And I'm seeing all kinds of things and picking up cues here. They're not picking it up because they're so focused on that one that one thing. Mm -hmm. And so if they expand their thinking and they dig down deeper and they broaden their look and, and, and see the things, now they say, okay, this isn't as important to their world as other things. How do I connect my offer? How do I connect this back to something they're rating a 9.2? Okay. Uh, because the CEO is all over them on it. Okay. Now, how, how do I do that? Now I'm presenting more information, more insights. And then they will rerun, hopefully to rerun that value calculation and now push the value up. Now the perception of value has changed, not because I said I've got more value, because right. we've reworked the priorities. We've reworked the whole playing field, if you will. 
So this requires then the salesperson to really start to understand the totality of the world, as you said, that the the buyer exists in or the client exists in. So not to be so narrowly focused on my product, your problem, but but more what are all the issues going on? What's happening within your company? So having a more expansive mindset when you're having those Correct. conversations. Correct. Now think for a minute about what we consider the core of today's sales training, whatever term sure. is given by the company selling, and it's called consultative selling. Mm -hmm. Various forms of it, but however it's been expanded, and you've got your own brand for it. We understand that, and, and the research is great on the ones that do it the best. But what does it mean? I'm a consultant. I understand what it means. I've been involved in it all my life, okay? And the consultant has to come in not with a preconceived notion. Right. It has to come in with more than that. So the consultant has to come in and say, we just lost it again. I'm, I'm, I, I hear thought. you. No, no. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the consultant has to come in and say, without a preconceived notion or agenda, what is mm -hmm. really going on here? Right. The problem with a salesperson is, this is what we're selling. The company said it's the greatest value. You know it's a great value. Go out there. It's super duper. Build that pride. Pump them up. Get out there. Focus, focus, focus. Mm -hmm. And to ask them to step back and be a newspaper reporter, a detective, a consultant mm -hmm. for just a little while, yep. just a little while to skip that perspective, it's hard. Yeah, it's yeah. hard, and well, it's it's hard, but and also because we're under pressure to move things forward all the time, and this could be perceived by less enlightened as you're letting this get out of control. Focus back on the issue that we solve. Right, and you know your company is involved in CRM, yes, the, the, the sales pipeline, mm -hmm. of course. And so what happens in today's world as opposed to 20 years ago before the CRMs and I as a sales executive, the sales vice president I'm sitting there, I can pull the CRM up and I know what Johnny's doing and he's in this call. He's going to leave the call. He's going to report. Sarah's over here. Man, I'm on top of it. Okay, what are you doing? What did you find? What did you find? The pressure, the, the immediacy of it with the CRM puts even more pressure on that salesperson to stay focused. And, and we wanted to stay focused, but we want to expand their mind, expand mm -hmm. the conversation. Uh, if we look at both the two, what now this is, I'm biased a little bit, please. Sure. At what I consider the two best, although they have people have their own favorites in the sales training out there, that would be Rain Insight and that would be Challenger. Mm -hmm. uh, and if somebody may say, well, Sandler, Sandler's good and Richard, okay, that's fine. But those and, two are really uh, uh, this is a top of the line. Yeah. Let's and and I, I used to run the company that did spin selling. So don't, and forget, to throw, selling. don't forget to throw spin in well, there. Yeah, of course. <laughs> You know, let's go back to the beginning of just a second. Now that you mentioned spin, I'm glad you did. Neil Rackham and, and Huff White was the mm -hmm. first company to ever do large scale empirical research mm -hmm. on sales, yeah. which blew away all the legacy ideas that it's not about the closing technique. It's not about objection handling. It's not about feature benefit. Mm -hmm. It's about discovery. Yes. It's all about discovery. And later research, Gong IO uh, did a research on over 1 million inside sales calls. And they reconfirmed what, what Neil Rackham came up with. So, mm. you know, I'm, I'm all with you on that. So all of this is excellent stuff because it's all about consultative selling. Mm. The, the, the reality is, even if you've got the best of this, you are still not getting everything because the focus is still on need, situation, issue. But here's mm. the thing about Challenger and about Insight. Mm -hmm. They both say you have to change the reality of the customer, right? New, new insights, new reality. You have to change the lens in which they're looking. That this is, they both say that, and I, I think, and also does, and also Spin mm -hmm. does that too. How do you change the lens? How do you do it? <laughs> well, you can't do it unless you are number one, unless you have have some good acumen yourself and some good business but you need to understand everything that's going on in order to to change the lens you can't have a superficial understanding of what's going on well, with them it's it's got to be a deeper conversation it's got to be deeper insights because you have to really have a conversation that's bigger than the immediate focus mm -hmm. to find where the insights are going to connect that the aha moment you're looking for that aha moment that none of the other salespeople are bringing yeah. And 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 now the other salespeople are all competing on a football field and you're on a, and you've built your golf course for them 
and you're and so that you and the customer are on the golf course and the customer is on the, is with the, is on the football field with everybody else you've got them yeah and that, you, you know that this is this is what it's all about yeah and it's interesting you mentioned uh, because yeah in in our CRM one of the things that we did to your point was we built in um, not just organizational charts but uh, buyer charts political maps if you like uh, where where you can map out the relationships and even bring in people from outside like a consultant say you're operating with a customer i can add that person in and i can say what influence that has to your point to broaden the whole perspective and to be able to get the full picture because i think that's exactly what you're talking about because you need to understand all the different influences at play yeah the it reminds me of a client i had um and they sell to Fortune 100s, mm -hmm. primarily tele telecoms. You know, right. the, you know the big names. We're sure. not even going to mention them. Okay. And they're selling millions of units of a technology product, winning and losing bids by one to two cents a, a, a unit. Okay. Because the entire purchasing department with RFPs and everything is made up of engineers and purchasing people. Right. Mm -hmm. And they have basically look at all the competitors as commodities. Right. And that's Okay. The buying issues that separate these products, because they're not the same, come down to things that are affecting the operations department and the service department and, and response departments and their cost. But that isn't getting back into the engineers in the purchasing department, so they're not seeing it. So in that particular sale, it wasn't just being aware of the buyer influence groups and reaching out to them. It was pulling the buyer mm -hmm. influence groups back in to the integrating them back in with the engineers and the purchasing instead of keeping them separate, you know, forcing them back into the sale where they were the engineering person were keeping them separate and it changed everything for them, you know. And that and that takes a, that's a great example there because that takes an element of skill and finesse to be mm -hmm. able to uh, and and to be honest, it's counterintuitive to some people who would say, oh, but that's just making the buying group bigger and there's more people involved. You're going, <laughs> no, these people need to be involved, right? But you also need the skill and the finesse to be able to bring those people in and to be able to persuade people to come into their own process. Yeah, I, you know, we obviously here have kind of taken our discussion very heavily into B2B. Mm -hmm. We're talking a lot about B2B and B2B is the most complex form of mm -hmm. selling as opposed to if you're selling an investment product or insurance sure. to, to an individual. It's less complex in one way, obviously, to do that. That's another part of sales. Very complex in terms of the relationship side. Sure. Because you have to sell to a husband and wife. <laughs> there's, there's not many influence groups, but oh my God, the dynamics involved there. <laughs> it's like, you know, it's almost easier to be B2B, I yeah. think. And probably, uh, yeah, I think so. And then probably, so it would probably be easier to bring in the, uh, the service group into the telecom discussion than it is sometimes to bring one of the spouses into the, uh, oh, yeah, into yeah. the decision but, process. I, I look at B2B a lot, and I think CRM and everything we're doing is really heavily focused on the B2B market. Mm -hmm. And we, you know, what I see in the killer salespeople out there is that okay, maybe they're selling into purchasing and engineering, but they can they can have a good conversation with a CEO and a CFO and a CMO, and 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 th and they can weave it, and they they just. They just have this way about it, and it's because they're seeing the bigger picture. They're going for these things. They're understanding the value connections. And they have the confidence to see themselves as uh, equals and as people with valuable things to, to say and valuable insights to, to bring. And I think that's, the, that's key as well because, let's face it, I'm sure you're the same. Uh, when I engage with the salesperson, is I, I don't want somebody to be – who's who's kind of in a subservient role or whatever i want somebody who's going to provide me with some insights right who's going to tell me what other people are doing it's going to surprise uh -huh. surprise me with uh this is the way it was used by x company or whatever something that i get that i get as much out of talking to them as i will um, almost with the product right yeah the, the, you raised a great point because when i talk to a lot of salespeople, they don't have that kind of Oh, I can't do these more consultative things because I'm not a consultant. I'm not an expert in this. Mm -hmm. I'm not an expert in that. And they literally do feel at a lower level. Right. You can sense it. And to open them up to say, you don't have to be a certified expert. You don't need sure. an MBA from Harvard. You can ask great questions, talk about things, and you're a smart person. And then they see you're bringing something of insight to them. 
and then it's an equal to equal thing. But but that is a huge issue. Yeah, and it really is. and the other thing is that because you have worked with other customers and probably customers in the same industry, you know things that the buyer doesn't know. Exactly. And you can share with them, and that's hugely valuable because that's one of the first things I always ask uh, uh, if somebody's selling something to me is I want to know how other people are using it. Yeah. Now, there's an interesting point that has changed, and you'll hear a lot of consultants, a lot of book authors talk about this. They'll say, well, in today's customer can go out there and learn everything about your offer, everything about what's going on. They already know it. And that really isn't true. Yeah. Okay, and, and, and I'm, I'm concerned about hearing this repeatedly from people. Yes, they're doing a lot more of their own vetting, a lot more of their own research. All that means is you really have to know your stuff to go deeper than what they know because there's no way they can know what you know. <laughs> and, and by the way, one of the one of the byproducts of this, and I firmly believe this, is yes, there's a lot of information out there, and yes, as a buyer, you can go and research it, but there's so much information. Number one, you can't really consume it all, and second off, I think it leads a lot of times to people backing off a decision because they get overwhelmed. So if you can come in and cut through the noise, uh, there's still fantastic opportunities. So yeah, I totally agree with you. Oh, I, the I th I think it's the buyer has access to a lot more information does not equate to them being better informed. That's right. Information overload. Mm -hmm. It's huge today. And and now if we're talking in the B2B market, the these people are so overwhelmed with all they have to do today that the the level of work, the amount of hours they're putting in, there's there's just no way that they're being asked to multitask on 10 fronts at the mm -hmm. same time. Uh, we can come in and guide them, lead them, guide and lead, not not sell, but guide and lead them to walk down a process of discovery where they realize, oh, my goodness, I wasn't thinking about that. Thank you. You know, that's what we want them to say. Absolutely. Well, listen, Dom, we're bumping up against the end of our time here, but I wanted to give you an opportunity to tell people a bit more about yourself and your company, uh, First Concepts Consultants. And uh, when uh, when are you hoping to have the book ready? Well, the book right now, the big thing, of course, First Concepts is a consulting firm, and we do everything from restructuring to working sales forces, marketing, operations, leadership, structure, the whole thing. Okay, that's fine. The, the, the research for the book, I, I've got all the information together. I have actually tested it on several, on many sales forces. It's been very effective. What I need to do now, the final step before I can finish the book and say, now I'm ready and this is going to be the date. I have to do what I call a clinical trial, you know, mm -hmm. from pharmaceuticals, sure. not quite a clinical trial, mm -hmm. but I want to get out there in front of as many sales forces as possible with like a seminar and then a follow up and reinforcement and then compare their results to other similar sales forces, same training that didn't have this mm -hmm. exposure and then see how much more do the sales go up here than here. I need about, I'm guessing, 150 of those. Yeah. And, it, you know, and it, so because you as a reader and all, anyone listening to this that's a reader, what you see today in the books today is you see some real solid research. It's not just someone's opinion. Mm -hmm. Now, I've got some basis of fact, but it's still anecdotal. It's not sufficient in quantity that you would say, oh, wow, boy, this happened in these many sales forces in this many situations, and they'd all gone through this training and that training. Oh, my goodness, there's something here. That's my goal. And once I have that together, then we'll be ready to finish the book. Well, I, uh, that's fantastic, Don. I mean, this is quite the undertaking, and I, uh, I, I really uh, wish you the best with it. But I think it's fantastic. It's, it's well needed. I think, as you said, there's a lot of books out there that are well researched, and then there's a lot of books that are opinion based. So mm -hmm. I think uh, there's always room for a book that is research based and proven. So again, my name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, Pipeliner, CRM, Don Shapiro. This has been a great conversation. Hopefully you'll come back and talk to us more, particularly as you get closer to releasing the book. I would love to. Thanks. Great. Thank you.